Я предоставляю слово нашему гостю из Австрии, из Вены, профессор Фогельзанг, очень красивая фамилия, эта фамилия переводится на русский язык как «пение птицы». Вот профессор Фогельзанг... для лекции о хронической диарее. Ага, пожалуйста. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, Professor Jabtulin, for his nice, nice introducing me. Uh, I'm uh, Harald Vogelsang. I'm from Austria, Vienna. Uh, and I thank for the kind invitation of the Johnson Johnson Company to come here for a lecture. Unfortunately, I don't speak Russian, uh, and I try to speak slowly in English. Uh, I'm speaking on loperamide use in acute and chronic diarrhea. Uh, I'm working at the University Hospital in Vienna. You may see it like here. And if you look at the building, it could be also as well in Moscow. Uh, They are working 1,400 medical doctors. It's the biggest hospital in Austria and one of the biggest in Central Europe. And we have to treat 2,100 inpatients, which are lying in hospital beds there. Um, Imodium or loperamide is very well known Uh, since more than 30 years all over the world and is distributed in all uh, the countries of the world. Uh, loperamide and diarrhea are associated uh, because it's one of the best drugs to treat acute diarrhea. But what is diarrhea? It is a change of normal bowel habit resulting in increased frequency of bowel movements more than three uh, per day with a consistency loss with loose or watery stools. But it uh, could differ from the opinion of the individual. He thinks every episode of loose stool uh, with increased frequency or urgency is an diarrhea. You may differ acute from chronic diarrhea. Normally, acute diarrhea lasts not more than two weeks. Uh, if it lasts more than four weeks, uh, it's diagnosed as chronic diarrhea, and you have to look for the underlying medical condition. Usually, you have uh, in Central Europe not more than two episodes of acute diarrhea in the healthy people. The main cause of it is viral or bacterial infection. Some are of non-infectious reasons. In these cases of acute diarrhea, you need not a consultation of the practitioner usually because it stops self-limited and you could use over-the-counter treatment. That means you could use Uh, the medication you want, you need not see the medical doctor. Uh, it's a completely different case in, the, in chronic diarrhea. Uh, the reason for chronic diarrhea is usually non-infectious. The causes could be IBS, irritable bowel syndrome or functional diarrhea, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, very seldom chronic infections like lambliosis, um, in 1% of the population celiac disease or bowel cancer, large bowel cancer. And in this case, you have cons uh, to consult a gastroenterologist or practitioner for medical treatment and diagnostics. The most widespread cause of acute diarrhea is viral infection. Uh, there are also uh, some people with bacterial infection associated with contaminated food, drinks, poor hygiene, and often associated with travels. 
Uh, there could be some dietary factors at spicy food, alcohol, much alcohol intake, and also stress-related, uh, especially in uh, irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, the most viruses uh, which cause viral gastroenteritis are rotaviruses and noroviruses in Austria. It could be adenoviruses, cepaviruses, and astroviruses. It usually causes watery diarrhea and nausea and vomiting. It's very infectious through direct contact or contamination of foods. The most important acute diarrhea is the traveler's diarrhea. It attacks 20 to 60 percent of travelers in many countries, especially high, if you look here, uh, 20 to 60 percent in Middle East, Southeast Asia, South and Central America, and Africa. It's about 50 to 20 percent in South and East, Eastern Europe and about 5% in Northern Europe and United States and Canada. It derives from bacterial infection uh, because of contaminated food or water. Uh, overall, travel broadens the mind but opens the bowels, you can say. Uh, the traveler's diary has some impact on the travels of the people. Should I speak louder? Okay. It, it affects about 10 million of people per year. It disrupts the holidays, uh, the business travels, and, and also uh, it has some impact of, on military deployment. Uh, uh, up to 46% of people are incapacitated for one to two days. 40% of them have to modify their travel plans. Uh, besides the travels, uh, in Western countries, only one to two episodes per person per year could be awaited in healthy people. For a minority of diarrhea, uh, for a minority of patients, diarrhea occurs more frequently. IBS related, related to in irritable bowel syndrome, to foot intolerances, stress related, but it could be also a symptom of a more significant underlying medical condition uh, in the case of chronic diarrhea and has to be investigated there. The most frequent cause of chronic diarrhea in Austria would be the irritable bowel syndrome in about 10 to 20 percent of the population. Much less, it's inflammatory bowel disease in 1 to 2 percent of the population because of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. And in about 1 percent, you have celiac sprue, celiac disease as, as a reason uh, of diarrhea. Chronic infections are very rare uh, as a cause of chronic diarrhea. Perhaps you don't know uh, this actor, but it's, uh, he uh, shows us how uh, irritable bowel syndrome would be. This comes from the movie Along Came Polly, and there he has to eat uh, an Indian dinner with his new girlfriend, and it, he gets very severe bowel pain and also diarrhea uh, already during the dinner. Irritable bowel syndrome is now usually diagnosed in young patients with the Rome 3 criteria and is characterized by abdominal pain, bloating, changes in bowel habit. It affects 10 to 20 percent of the population. It's much more widespread in female than in male patients. And the main factors for irritable bowel syndromes are psychological, altered bowel motility, and altered bowel sensitivity. 
there are more than 60% of irritable bowel syndrome which is associated with diarrhea, as you may see here, but it could also be associated with constipation or with the mixed type diarrhea and constipation. There are uh, at least three randomized controlled studies of loperamide in irritable bowel syndrome, and this led to the recommendation of the British Society of Gastroenterology and also of the German Society uh, that recommend in patients with urgency and diarrhea uh, that they could use in irritable bowel syndrome 4 to 12 milligrams of loperamide that means two to six uh, capsules or tablets per day. Codeine is reasonable alternative, but more likely to cause unwanted sedation. It, that means loperamide has, has no central uh, CNS activity. There are much more other antidiarrheals, but uh, loperamide is the most well-known uh, is the most, uh, is the best uh, shown uh, anti-motility agent. Also, uh, it would also work with morphine, diphenoxylate, and with adsorbents as kaolin at the pulgage. But uh, in fact, uh, actually, we don't use the others. Uh, we haven't registered bismuth subsalicylate in Austria. Uh, and we use uh, this uh, anti-motility agent, the loperamide the modium, uh, together with the oral rehydration solutions to get the, the, the patients well hydrated. Uh, the loperamide is acting as anti-motility agent. It's not only anti-motility, but also anti-secretory. It acts locally within the gut, not outside the gut, and it, and it has a rapid onset within one hour. Uh, it has a minimal systemic absorption and therefore no addictive potential. It's well tolerated. Uh, adverse events are very rare and harmless. There are a lot of published reviews on loperamide, and, and they concern the self-medication uh, in acute uh, diarrhea, and they tell us that the self-medication is usually uh, safe in healthy adults, uh, and it is uh, one of the most effective anti-motility agents uh, as coming from Canada here, uh, and it's a very uh, good for non-specific therapy of travel diaries coming here from the textbook of travel medicine. Overall, it's a very harmless and effective drug. Uh, also, uh, a statement from uh, the European board uh, tells us that uh, it should not be withdrawn uh, from healthy people uh, it should be used uh, in adults for self-medication uh, for the treatment of acute diarrhea. We are unanimous in the view that there is no advantage to be gained from withholding medication. This merely exacerbates uh, the distress and the discomfort of the disorder. There are some common myths uh, about uh, anti-motility drugs. Diarrhea could be or is a defense mechanism, mechanism and should not be treated. Uh, of course, people don't want to be not treated. They want to be treated for diarrhea. Anti-diarrhea agents reduce stool output and keep toxins or pathogens inside the body where they do more damage. In fact, I looked at the PubMed uh, at the publications, and, and I found only one case on problems with Clostridium difficile toxins in patients with anti-motility agents. 
Of course, there are some more, and usually you don't use it in uh, post-antibiotic diarrhea, but usually there is no problem uh, in most of the patients. Diarrhea may prolong illness. Uh, mix, uh, no, uh, antimotility agents may prolong illness by delaying pathogen excretion. Uh, but you could use uh, the combination also of antibiotics of, and anti-motility anti-motil- uh, treatment. Reports of adverse outcomes with ph- pharmacological treatments uh, are very seldom and making some of the myths. Are anti- anti-motility agents really contraindicated in patients with dysentery? Historical uh, treatment of dysentery with anti-motility agents such, such as uh, diphenoxylate and loperamide has been contraindicated. It was believed that reduced intestinal motility would worsen dysentery by slowing pathogen clearance. But recent uh, uh, studies of patients also with shigellosis and dysentery uh, who were given a combination of loperamide and an antibiotic therapy had a shortened duration of diarrhea without adverse effects. Coming from a textbook rather recently. And if you look at uh, some studies of combinations of loperamide, loperamide is shown here in blue, light blue, and, uh, and the antibiotic nifurosin in red, uh, and the yellow ones is the combination of loperamide and antibiotic, you may see that it decreases the hours of diarrhea in the patients as well in the, in, uh, in the loperamide group here on the left, as well in, in the combination group. That means there is no problem uh, with the combination of loperamide and antibiotics. And there are some more studies, three more studies on loperamide with azithromycin, loperamide with rifaximin, loperamide with cotrimoxazole, and all the uh, studies show that uh, people benefit from loperamide and benefit uh, especially from the combination uh, of loperamide with uh, some antibiotics in patients with suspected uh, bacterial diarrhea. Uh, what's about the safety of loperamide? There is no pr- evidence of prolongation of fever or delay of pathogen excretion. Uh, as already mentioned, uh, also contraindicated for dysentery, no evidence of aggravation of mild or febrile uh, dysentery, uh, even if, if taken as monotherapy without uh, antibiotics. Used with antimicrobials, with antibiotics, it reduces unformed stool, shortens the di- duration of diarrhea. Uh, because of a possible CNS central uh, actions, it is not recommended for uh, children under uh, the age of two years in the un- uh, European Union. Uh, if uh, you would use loperamide as self-medication, you have uh, to take care, especially uh, on rehydration. You could uh, use it with loperamide, you could use it with some probiotics, saccharomyces or other bacteria, adstringents, adsorbents, and uh, phytotherapy. I think, for me personally, the main point is uh, to look uh, on the execution of patients. Symptoms of dehydration in an adult could be lacking energy, feeling lightheaded, lightheaded, dizziness, the dry tongue, sunken eyes, muscle cramps, and rapid heartbeat. There is a new formulation of the oral rehydration solution. It, it has a lower osmolarity than the former one. It's now 245 millimoles per liter, 
and uh, it contains sodium chloride, glucose, potassium chloride, and rhesium citride. The effects of loperamide on bowel is suppression of excessive uh, bowel activity, but not of the normal activity of the bowel. Increase of the tension of bowel muscles normalize the transport of the feces through the bowel, improves stool continence, and this is often a problem in some patients, the continence, uh, the anal continence, and it improves stool continence by increasing the sphincter tonus. It diminishes hypersecretion, but normal secretion of fluid in the lumen. That means it uh, diminishes the stool output of the anus. Uh, there are uh, a few newer studies on loperamide coming from Hanau in the United States, and uh, these, are sh these are showing us that loperamide is the best uh, of reducing uh, the number of four unformed stools or reducing the period of time until un uh, unformed stools uh, take place. Uh, it's the best result in loperamide in comparison with Symeticon, in comparison with placebo. And many of them have formed stool within 12 stools after beginning the intake of loperamide. And you may see uh, the same here on this picture. Uh, here you may see the patient with the uh, last unformed stool and within 20 Four hours, you see 80%, more than 80% uh, benefit from it. They have uh, got again regained form stools with, within 24 hours. How to give it, how to treat it? Symptomatic treatment of acute diarrhea in adults and children of six years of age where no causal therapy is available. Uh, could start in adults with uh, those of two capsules and one capsule after each unformed stool afterwards with a maximum of, of eight capsules per day in children over six starting with one capsule and continuing with one capsule after each unformed stool. Uh, what are the contraindications for the over-the-counter treatment, the self-medications of patients? Uh, absolute contraindications are children under six years here in Russia, hypersensitivity to loperamide, which is very rare, I have never seen it myself, and to other ingredients. Uh, acute dysentery, uh, if you have the suspicion of a bacterial infection, severe bacterial infection as Salmonella, Shigella, and Campylobacter. Intestinal obstruction, of course, that uh, is uh, especially, could be especially a problem in long-standing patients with Crohn's disease, diverticulosis, acute ulcerative colitis, uh, especially of the danger of toxic me megacolon, and pseudomembranous enterocolitis, which is usually uh, induced by antibiotic therapy. And also by pregnancy uh, in the first trimester and breastfeeding. You should cause it, use it with caution in severe liver diseases. Oh. My personal indications uh, how I use it uh, in my office, and I am a specialist in, in gastroenterology, and I am especially treating patients with uh, diarrhea, and especially, of course, chronic diarrhea, and some also with acute diarrhea. I use it uh, widespread in acute, non-complicated diarrhea to improve the possibilities to work and, and also uh, to benefit from the holidays. Also in uh, irritable bowel syndrome, because these patients suffer much from fear and are very anxious, and to reduce their social 
economic disabilities, you could use loperamide. Uh, I also use it in some patients with Crohn's disease. In those patients where I know that they don't have strictures and uh, who have high output of stools despite of optimized anti-inflammatory therapy. Of course, the first therapy of choice in, in Crohn's disease is anti-inflammatory therapy. But if you have some patients with a well-treated, uh, with the respect of inflammation, you could uh, add the Imodium and the patient will benefit. And I like loperamide very well in short bowel syndrome because it improves uh, the possibility of resorption uh, in these patients by reduction of small intestinal hurry. And so some people, some patients with short bowel syndrome gain weight and, and really benefit uh, from this drug. Overall, Loperamide is indicated especially in acute, uncomplicated diarrhea and diarrhea-dominated irritable bowel syndrome. As I already told you, unfortunately, I can't speak Russian, but uh, do svidaniya and have a nice spring here in Moskva. Thank you.